Okay, class, in the last video, this is serum lipid transport. In the last video, we discussed the micelle and bile and how your fats eaten in the diet could get underneath the water layer and get into the intestinal epithelial cells for absorption. So that's where we had gone with the micelle. Let's move further now. Now, at this point, we're inside the intestinal epithelial cells. Okay, the inside. So where we now are is I want to talk about, we're going to cap, take a caveat, talk, caveat for more. I want a tangent. I want to talk about your lipoproteins. Okay, the first lipoprotein I'm going to speak on is going to be the chylomicron. It is going to be made by the intestinal epithelial cell. Then I will talk about the very low density lipoprotein, low density, high density. I won't talk about intermediate. That's so it'll be this, this, and this, you'll see. Okay. So remember where we are inside the intestinal epithelial cells. Remember the density had to do with the protein amount. The more protein, the more dense. So here's kind of a picture showing you the size. Here's here is the chylomicron is fairly large and see the proteins are dense, okay, high density lipoprotein, and we'll be talking about that. I'm going to skip this one. So the first one we come to is the chylomicron, okay. The chylomicron is made by the intestinal epithelial cell. The chylomicron is made by the intestinal epithelial cell, okay, in order to get it through the intestinal epithelial cell. Here's kind of its composition, and you can look at that at your leisure. Okay, skipping this slide. Okay, I'm going to skip that. Here's the very low density lipoprotein, and we'll be putting this in play. And this mainly carries triglycerides in the bloodstream. We'll chat on that. Okay, here you see how much triglyceride percentage wise, and you see how low the protein percent. So we'll bring this back up, okay, we'll go further, not doing the intermediate. Here's the low density. See the protein amount has come up some, but this primarily carries cholesterol. This is sometimes called your bad cholesterol. See it's really not bad cholesterol, it's a lipoprotein. We'll, we'll talk about that, okay. So then we go further. And I'm going to deal with this. Okay, here's the high density lipoprotein. And see how much protein. And it this is your good, it primary, it carries a lot of cholesterol, but it carries it back to the liver for storage. So we'll be bringing all of these up. We'll be bringing all of these up as we go through. We'll go here now. All right. So here is what I put together called my complete story. Okay, hopefully this will help you. We'll do some in this video and some in the next. Okay, so you eat a meal with cholesterol, triglycerides, fatty acids, typical meal. Triglycerides are broken down. Don't worry about this right here. But let's go to three. In order to absorb the lipids, need bile to emulsify the lipids so you allow them to pass under the water layer. So don't worry about two. Okay. It enters the duodenum, first part. Okay, right here is the duodenum. Okay, bile would have come in. The bile mixes, comes in, mixes with the fat up in here, forms a micelle. The micelle allows the fat to move to the top of the intestinal epithelial cells, as we saw here. And we see here. Okay, All right, so that's we up to there. Okay, here triglycerides and so forth. Okay, you can look at that. See right here, this is showing those things entering into here. Those are the micelles. That's the micelles again coming in. And this is the intestinal epithelial cell. Now the intestinal epithelial cell is going to make this thing called a chylomicron. So you see you have plenty to look at. Okay. The lipids are allowed into the intestinal epithelial cells by simple diffusion, particularly in the, okay, in the ileum. 
Okay, it passes down, the bile goes down and through, and then, and then as we say, the bile farm will stay behind and then be used again. So it won't get into seven much. That's not really a big deal. Once the fats are in the intestinal epithelial cells, see, we want, we're cutting some out because I want to get to the heart of the matter for this chapter. This is not a digestive system chapter, so I'm getting more to the cardiovascular aspect. Once the fats are in the intestinal epithelial cells, don't worry about that part. Essentially, just realize chylomicrons are made inside here. So again, we go to this picture. Chylomicrons are made inside there. Okay. All right. So we go further. Here again is a picture of the gallbladder and so forth. Okay, we go further. The chylomicrons are too large to diffuse through the intestinal epithelial membrane or through the basement membrane. So their job is to be formed here and to come out and then try to get that, that, that lipid into the lymphatics. Remember, go back. All lipids enter the lymphatics first. See, water-soluble stuff like proteins and everything absorb in, in your small intestine directly into the bloodstream. But if you go back, when we did the lymphatics, lipids are first put into the lymphatics. Lipids are first put into the lymphatics. See, here's the lymphatics right there in the intestinal. And then the lymphatics coalesce, go back to that, and finally dump everything in through the thoracic duct into the bloodstream. See, this is where this story ties into the lymphatic system. Okay? So the chylomicrons. So the chylomicrons then enter the central lacteal. That's that right there. The central lacteal of the lymphatics. And the lymphatics carry them to the bloodstream at the thoracic duct. Okay? So now we have the lipids inside the bloodstream. Once they get into the thoracic duct, which enters the left subclavian vein, you may have gotten that, then there we are. Once in the, in the bloodstream, capillary endothelial cells and skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, adipose tissue produce something. Now see, right now they're chylomicrons. Produce something called a lipoprotein lipase. So skeletal muscle cells so lining cells of blood vessels in the capillaries in skeletal muscle and adipose produce and secrete lipoprotein lipase. This causes the chylomicron to break down and release its materials. Where's its materials going? Into these cells. They are getting the first hit of some fat coming into you. Cholesterol, skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles, and adipose tissue. Skeletal muscles needed to produce energy, cardiac muscles. If you remember, cardiac muscles is the only muscle that primarily uses fat over glucose for this. And then, of course, you know you store it in adipose. You still, they suck out stuff, but you still have some left over. And this chylomicron remnant. So, in other words, you let some of the passengers out but you still got that remnant of the chylomicron. Still a little stuff left. The chylomicron remnant enters the liver cells by endocytosis. So in other words, that's the end of the chylomicron. Its final route after it's passed off its cargo is to enter the liver. where, And because the liver is where you store most of your cholesterol. See, the liver. So whatever's left after you take divvied up what you need, the liver will take all the rest. Okay, in the liver for storage and subsequent transport. So the liver is kind of your, your storage site to deliver cholesterol to other areas of the body. All right, so just kind of work with it. So again, here's the central lacteal, which you see there. So, okay, the liver stores some of the lipids and some it sends out forming VLDL. Now I want to come here back. I want you to think. You delivered some to skeletal muscle car and, and uh, cardiac and adipose before you even gave the liver what, what it was going to get. These guys are stingy. They keep that what they got themselves and use it themselves. They keep it themselves and use it themselves. Well, these store fat, as you know what fat tissue is, so the liver takes it, and the liver is kind of a warehouse, we'll say. 
that holds cholesterol and so forth and cells in the body that need it, it'll send it out. Remember, you don't eat every minute of the day. So you have to store your nutrients. You have to store your nutrients. Where are you storing cholesterol? Primarily in the liver. Where are you storing triglycerides and fatty acids in adipose tissue? So these are the storage for that, but the liver is the storage for cholesterol. These are so other words, if you don't eat for a while, you get skinnier, right? Because the adipose tissue here, those fat cells start giving out fatty acids, triglycerides. But if you need cholesterol, these guys don't do it. It's this right here that does it, the liver. Okay. So when it's when, so what does the liver do? When it gets ready to send out some cholesterol and it'll send a little triglycerides too. Cause it's sending a package, but primarily the fat, the fat cells have most of it, but they hold on to it. Now, they don't liberate until they have to. So if you say, well, Mike, what sends out triglycerides first? The liver. Once, once you start getting low on triglycerides and fatty acids, you know, fatty acids and triglycerides, then the fat cells are doing. Then the fat cells. That's why, that's why you don't lose weight that easily or get, or get slimmer because most of the work is being done by the liver. Now the liver is doing all the work for sending out cholesterol and for the usual time it's doing most of the work sending out fatty acids and triglycerides to cells that need it. But, but once it starts getting a little low because you haven't eaten fats in a long time or you're in a starvation or mode, then that's when the fat cells will start delivering. Now, these other two cells ain't going to never deliver anything. They're going to keep everything for themselves, skeletal muscle and cardiac. Okay? So you got to kind of see who's doing what. Who's doing what? So the liver, when it gets ready to send out some stuff, it makes what we call VLDL. The liver does that. Let's go here. Here's VLDL. It's mainly carrying triglycerides, but it's also carrying cholesterol. It's sending this to other areas. Where is it coming from? The liver. The liver made VLDL. The fat cells don't normally do it unless you're in a starvation mode. Okay. So VLDL, when we look at that in the blood, we primarily are looking at your triglyceride carrier called very low density lipoprotein. Here's the constant. Here's what we're looking at. All right. The VLDL then circulates until it's met by the same enzyme again, lipoprotein lipase in endothelial cells of adipose tissue. Okay. So excess, this, this is how the adipose tissue gets some more triglycerides or some more fatty acids is because it's coming from here. Cardiac muscle. So those three, same three guys. Remember, these guys hold everything for themselves. But the adipose is adding more to your fat tissue. Okay. Now, when, when some of the triglycerides are sucked out from the VLDL, some of the triglycerides, because that's primarily what's going to get sucked out by these cells now. When that occurs, then there's a rechange in the percentages because now when you suck out some triglycerides and you let's say you keep most of this intact then the density is going to go up because you drop that percentage so now i'm to low density lipoprotein how did i get low density lipoprotein is when you take some of the triglycerides out so we're going to stop here and then we're going to start at low-density lipoprotein.